Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time. Uh, today we are going to be using the Perfectly Wicked and the Perfectly Wicked add-on from Lawn Fawn, and then also these scallop frames. I cut one out already. I'm going to be using the Purple uh, Watercolor Wash page from the My Favorite Things 6x6 pad. So I took the time before this video to cut all of these out and I just want to appeal to Lawn Fawn to have disconnected dyes because I'm so very tired of doing it. So I have prepped my coloring sheet and all of my markers in front of me and I wrote down which markers are going to be used for which items. Just to save some time in this video, I already had to speed it up and it was still very long. So I'm gonna trim down the purple watercolor wash paper base to four and a quarter by five and a half, a little bit, tiny, tiny bit more than that on both sides, just to make sure that it covers my full card base. Uh, as I've talked about many times, the card base measurements are not perfect and sometimes they're a little bit bigger. And I wanna make sure that uh, it fits and covers it all so there's no white peeking out. This takes me a good three tries to line that up properly. So I'm just gonna get the whole base ready. I'm gonna stick the white frame down to the card base as well with glue. Uh, I think I had started out with dots and then I just kind of went into a stream of glue. I just wanna make sure that it doesn't squeeze out so I was trying not to use too much. Um, I also have some fun letters. If you can spot them in the bottom left corner, I use the Oliver's Stitched ABCs, which are uh, one of my favorites. Uh, one of those items I will never de-stash or get rid of. Um, I use those letters all the time. So that will be part of our card and we'll do that part kind of towards the end as we're building our scene. Um, I did scrape a little bit of glue there and I was starting to scrape up the purple paper so I stopped because I didn't want to ruin it. So now we're going to do our coloring. I have a mix of uh, Copics which are the ones I'm showing you here for the cauldron. And I'm gonna take a quick cleaning break because this lid and marker was pretty nasty. Um, I will also be using a number of the Ohuhu brush markers. I have the 72 set of Ohuhu brush markers. I really like them. There's a good number of color combinations that really work and they're a very good quality brush tip in a marker, um, similar to Copics. And um, I just haven't used them a lot, so I decided to reach for several of those for this video. And then I have a couple uh, tri-blends that I reach for as well. So Copics, Ohuhu brush, and a few tri-blends, kind of in the mix here. This is a lot more images than I normally do on a card, but this set is so cute. And I was so excited to use it I wanted to stamp all the bits that I knew I would fit onto a card. I don't end up using the book, even though I do color that in, and the like the little magical stuff that would come out of the pot, because I use the bubbles that come out of the pot, uh, but I didn't use the little magic bits that I, my finger is touching right now, if that makes sense. Um, so because this sheet was bigger, because I had to fit more images on it, um, the I had to use a bigger stamping platform. I have three stamping platforms. I have the mini Misty and I have a bigger Misty, which I could have used for this as well. But I also have the bigger Misty sized Hampton art, I believe, the, the one with the teal ruler along it. Um, looks very similar to the Misty. Um, I think it worked fine. My images weren't too, too crisp and I had to stamp it a third time. Um, I could try it again in the Big Misty and see if it's the platform that matters. I did use my Pressure Pal, um, but there were a lot of images. So they, it did really well for the number of images I stamped at once, if that makes sense. Um, I labeled my cats by number so that I would remember which combos I was using. Um, so yeah, because I had to stamp those 
three times. Um, I was hoping it would turn out okay and they worked out fine. Um, I also spent a while drying with my heat gun um, the sheet of images so that the ink would dry. I think it did an okay job. It's not perfect. I still had a couple things smear. Like when I color the crystal, I get some black smear, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. I could have stamped another one and colored it again extra carefully, trying not to touch the lines. It is just a very small object. Um, my calico cat, I think I need to practice calico cats, which is weird because I have one and I, you'd think I'd know how to color her by now. Um, I just used an orange and a black Copic and left the white space open. So just orange, black, and white, but it turned out kind of splotchy. And I realized some of this is on camera. Sorry about that. Off camera. Um, I ended up putting like shoes on it with black spots. It just kind of looks silly to me, but that's fine. Um, I forgot that I wanted to put pink cheeks on them. Maybe I will still do that even though I didn't do it in this video, but I can still do it on the finished card. So there's that. Um, I'm still working on how to not smear the ink. So I think for maybe some of my future videos, if I can plan them enough, uh, at least for this month and in the future, um, is stamp the images ahead of time. Maybe you can tell me what you think down below. Do you really need to see the stamping in the video? Um, I do like sharing my stamping in the platform with my pressure pal because I really think that it's a fantastic item and I love promoting it. I don't really want to take that out of the video because um, I like to help her and her shop out because it really is a great item and it helps a lot. But if I can pre-stamp the images ahead of time and set them out for a couple days, then I might not have to worry about it smearing as much, but I also haven't tested that theory. So I don't know if that would even work, if a couple days of drying time would help. Um, so anyway, enough about that. Um, this BR1 and BR2 combo has been one of my favorite Ohuhu brush color combos for browns, uh, not just because there really isn't any other option for brown combos, but it happens to be a good combination. Uh, they could have made two browns that didn't go well together, but uh, these two blend pretty great when you only need a two color blend. Um, I can't recall if there is a third one that would work well, but uh, the two color blend is usually a pretty good kind of color variant for me. The R9 and the R10 actually worked really well together, surprisingly, for being pretty different pinks. Um, they really blended at that blending point where they come together pretty well. So I wanted to have a pinky potion and then a green potion. And I realized on this potion bottle that most of it, I believe, is the label. And so I just did green, like I filled it up with green. And then I used BG000 for like the glass, what the glass would be on the other one. And then I realized that that one had a cork. So I used BR1, but I wanted them to match. So I turned the other one into a cork as well. I don't know if that's what it is. Um, I'm using these three greens, which actually turned out to be a pretty good combo for these bubbles. I'm just kind of trying to shade it how it might make sense, but still let the bubbles pop out. So the ones below are getting the two lighter colors and then the darker shades are kind of in between the bubbles, if that makes sense. So maybe they're making more frog breath. Um, I stamped the words onto the books and the potion that has a label on it off camera after I was done die cutting them out because I did that part off camera. Uh, so you'll see those on there already as I'm putting the scene together. But uh, those stamped pretty well. The A in breath kind of filled in, but I was just using acrylic blocks. If I had mounted it into a platform, which is such a small, it's such a small thing, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, but if I did, I probably could have... Um, 
gotten a more even pressure and the A wouldn't have filled in, but I don't know that because it is such a very small hole on a stamp. Um, I'm just using random color combinations for the books to get them filled in. And uh, another thing I think about is usually when I'm making a card that has so many elements, I'm putting down or into my stamping platform uh, just one, obviously one of everything, uh, one of whatever I want on there. Uh, but there are some really cute cards out there using this stamp set where there are like four shelves and many stacks of different colored books and a bunch of different potions and um, several of one item. So I have a habit of just wanting to get the one page stamped with all the images and then get them colored in and get them on the card. Maybe just because it was for a video, but I did pre-stamp these anyway, so I could have done that um, for this card as well. Um, but don't forget, it's just one of those things, obviously. If you see a card like that, you'll know what to do. Um, but don't forget that you can, you know, stamp multiples of these items and incorporate them into the same scene. And you can still make them look different. Uh, these books could be stacked on their side or on their bottom. Um, there's also a book in the stamp set that would appear that you're looking at, like the page side of the book instead of the spine of the book. Um, so you could do a bunch of those. There are a lot of people that do their bookshelves like that. Have you seen that? Where they put their the, the spine against the wall and all you see is the paper. It actually looks kind of cool. I'm not sure the reasoning behind it aside from maybe not having all that information to look at and just looking at the insides of books. You tell me. Um, uh, but maybe a ne the next card I make with this set, I'll do several shelves and get all those cats in there. I think I only skipped one cat. So I'm going to die cut those out. Those are all my pieces that I colored in. And they are over there. So then uh, we are going to be using the Hope Your Halloween Is and then Possum. And I'm going to be heat embossing the Hope Your Halloween Is with white embossing powder on black cardstock. But for the Possum, I'm taking two colors, two Copics, I believe Y38 and Y17. Um, I wanted it to be kind of orangey, so like half and half letters. Uh, they're pretty close for blending, but you can tell them apart. So uh, I think the blend worked out pretty well. So I'm doing the Y38 on top and the Y17 on the bottom. But I also cut the letters out of black because I want to mount them. Um, you can mount them on black like you can put the letter exactly on top of the black version of the letter to just get kind of some some height and some shadow under it so it's a little more prevalent, if that makes sense. But what I'm going to do is put it on top and then like up and to the right by like a millimeter so that you see more of the black underneath it. So I'll show you a couple of the letters and then I'm going to do the rest of them off camera just so this video isn't forever long. Um, so you can see there's a little black peeking out on the left and the bottom, basically. And then that way it gets kind of like has a shadow to the left of it. And then that happens to fit perfectly along the bottom within that white scalloped frame. So it works out. So I put the rest of the letters together. I'm just gonna start in the far left corner. I end up putting these in here because I was actually worried they weren't gonna fit, uh, but it ended up working out. So I must have uh, done my offset correctly. Um, I'm just gonna start in the corner and then I think the E ends up in the corner anyway. So I'm keeping them pretty close together just in case. And it's nice to have the frame to line it up because I can just rest it up against the frame on the bottom and I don't have to worry about figuring out how to make it straight. Which I usually use like a strip of washi tape as a tip 
if you needed to put this, let's say across the middle, but it needed to be straight, you could make sure that a piece of washi tape, because it's the low tack tape, uh, across the middle is straight and then you can line all your letters up on top of the washi tape line and then peel up the washi tape and then it should be straight. You can also use a T-square ruler, whatever works for you. Um, so then we're going to stamp our Hope Your Halloween Is. I'm just going to grab a big acrylic block and then use the embossing buddy to prep the cardstock to make sure the embossing powder doesn't stick. And I usually never have a problem um, with embossing powder sticking where it shouldn't, even though I do my embossing buddy and then I wipe off all of the dust because I don't like it. There are people who, I can't watch it. It really makes me, I don't know, makes me feel weird when people use the embossing powder and then don't brush any of it away and stamp on top of it. I don't understand it. <laughs> It's almost like um, the ink won't get through it. But anyway, that's just me. Um, so I brush it away, but it doesn't affect its effectiveness, if that makes sense. It still works just fine. So I am melting this, and then I eventually zoom in a little bit so you can see it melt with me. I didn't think my first stamp uh, was enough ink, so I did it a second time. And I'm just going to use these really long scissors to kind of keep... The line straight. It's a lot straighter than it would be if I used my detail scissors. And then I needed to trim off just a little bit more on the bottom. And then I'm just going to set that on the top left of the possum sentiment. And then we can build the rest of our scene around it. Um, it's going to be a very interesting cat witch cove situation. Uh, I was just kind of placing things around. I eventually decide that the shelf works in the upper right hand corner. I also need to put the bubbles. I really like how they did the die cuts for these because it gives you a place below the bubbles and the other items. The ones in the add-ons like the worms or the candy or whatever. Uh, you can put the glue so that you can put the cauldron together. Um, so that was really neat and that makes it a little bit easier. And then the stool, and I decided this cat, because he's facing the right way in my scene, um, that he is going to be stirring the pot. Uh, for the shelf, I decided to start with the books and then put the shelf underneath that, because if I did it the other way around, then I definitely would have not enough room for the books. I just know it. So then... Uh, as a little trick, because now we have that piece, um, I want to keep the cauldron as one piece kind of level. So I'm adding another piece of cardstock so that it's like a level playing field, if that makes sense. And then put glue over all of it so that it sticks down to our background uh, smoothly. Hopefully that makes sense. And then um, the stool that our little kitty has to stand on because he's a short little kitty and he has to stir his potion, probably more frog breath, um, because the frog breath is green. And then his witch hat, um, this takes way too much effort. But basically I'm doing the same thing I did with the cauldron because the brim of the hat is going to be touching like up on his head. So to make it level the top of the hat. I almost cut off the tip of the hat right there. Um, the top of the hat needs a little lift up so that it sits evenly on that background as well. And I got a little glue on his hat. So then I wanted to work in after I put the frog breath. That's the one that I stamped into that label up on the shelf. I wanted to work in these two kitties. I could have used the other gray kitty, but I figured um, two gray kitties next to each other might have kind of not popped as much. So I'm putting this one. His tail is a little bit on the Hope Your Halloween Is piece, but that's okay. He's going to be holding the pink potion and then the little gray kitty. I'm just going to line him up with the frame on top of the letters there. He's going to be holding my crystal that I accidentally smeared the ink on when I was coloring. 
And for the kitty with the spoon, stirring the pot, the spoon actually fits perfectly in between the bubbles and the cat. So I didn't have to cover up any of my images with the spoon and I was very happy about that. So that should be it for this scene. I didn't end up using the other gray squiggly line striped kitty. I was trying to get it to focus and it would not. So then I eventually will tap my uh, screen, my phone screen at the end for you to see it clearly. Um, I decided to run Wink of Stella over all of the letters, the bubbles in the cauldron, the two potions, his crystal, anything that needed to kind of look a little more magical. And then I am using a white pen to just do random accents here and there, trying my hardest not to smear any previous accents or get Wink of Stella glitter all over my hands. Um, just a few accents on the books. I realize I didn't do any on the shelf, but it's such a small area. I'm not sure that would have worked anyway. So uh, those accents are the end of it. I am going to be uh, showing it to you clear so you can see it up close. And that will finish off the card. I hope you enjoyed. Also, it's day 12 of a video every day in October. So I will see you again for another video tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye.